Today we are going to start with the chapter The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Before going into the chapter, I would like to introduce to you some important personalities. Do you know him? Yes, obviously. He is Rowan Atkinson, who has played the major role of Mr. Bean, one of our favorite entertaining shows. But do you know that he is a holder of master's degree in electrical engineering that he received from Oxford University. So think about what is the mindset that he had while he chose acting as his career. I would give you another example. This is Shaquille O'Neal, a big man with a big degree of course. Shuck is famous for being one of the most dominant players ever to preside over a basketball court. He's a great basketball player, but he even had a degree or a doctorate in leadership and education from Barry University. Can you imagine a doctorate? But he chose to be a basketball player. Now, here is Maim Berlik, who doesn't just play the role of a nerdy scientist in the famous TV series called The Big Bang Theory, but she is one in real life too. She has PhD in neuroscience from USLA, UCLA. She is a brilliant scientist, neuroscientist, but she chose to be an actor. Now, why I'm telling all these examples or giving all these examples to you? Because I want to tell you about the choices or the decisions all these great personalities have made in their life. So, before reading the poem, I would like to know about the various objectives that you should keep in mind while we read through the poem and after we have finished it. You should just check whether you have understood these objectives or not. First, we will be evaluating the importance of decisions we make in our life. Number two, we would remember the importance of our own choice. Number three, we would analyze the dilemma that plays an important role in everybody's life. There is nothing to worry about it. And number four, we would understand that we are unique and do not have to follow anybody or any crowd towards our goal. Now coming up to the poem. Here is the poem in front of your eyes. And I've also put forward the important meanings for you beside it. So let us go through the poem first. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Diverged means separated and took different directions. As you can refer to the first picture where I have shown you in the slide. And sorry, I could not travel both. Obviously, the poet is not being able to travel in both the roads. He have to make a decision. Now, these roads are only metaphoric. They represent the two ways or the two, dilemma, two choices that we always have to take or have to choose in our life. Okay? And look down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. He wanted to see as far as his eyes spread it. And he looked that there was undergrowth over there. What is undergrowth? Undergrowth is dense growth of plants and bushes. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps a better claim. Then he looked at the other road which had a better claim. Better claim means because it was grassy and wanted where? Wanted where because it had not been used. See the meaning of wanted where is being had not been used. Okay. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves. No step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the forest for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way. I doubted if I should ever come back. Now he is saying that and both that morning equally lay. That means both were equally important for me, for him actually. And he took one and left other. Maybe he knew that one roads lead to other, but he thought that he is never going to. He doubted that he is ever going to come back to that way. 
I shall be telling this with sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Hence means in the future over here. Somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Now he is saying that some somewhere in the future I am going to be very happy about my decision. And I would say that I have been able to choose my way for myself and I have taken one road between the two roads those were in front of me. And that has made all the difference in my life. Whenever somebody is taking a step that person is taking that step to make some difference in their life. Just as we have seen in the previous examples like Mr. Bean, like the basketball player, Shakib O'Neal, or maybe the film star, the woman who has been PhD, still she chose to be an actor. And that has made all the difference. We did not have any idea that Mr. Bean had so much degree. We know him as Mr. Bean only. That has made the difference. The choice that he had made in the past had made the difference in his life now. That is what the poem is talking about. Now, some major points that you should remember from this poem. Robert Frost is known to be an American romantic poet. Who is a romantic poet? A romantic poet is one who talks and writes about nature and relates our emotions with the natural elements of his description. Number two, this poem talks about making decisions and dilemmas that we constantly face in our life. What are dilemmas? When we are not being able to choose between two things. That is called a dilemma. Number three, the two roads, one trodden more and one less trodden, are symbol of ways taken or not taken by people. Maybe when Mr. Bean was uh, reading or taking his degree, most of the people of his day, of those who were, who were having degrees like him must have pursued academic career after that. Everybody would have looked at him like a fool that you were taking a foolish decision going into acting now, having so much academic skills. But he chose to stand different, not he had decided not to take that way which was taken by most of the people. He chose to stand apart. That is what over here the poem is talking about. Next point, the poet could not see the end of neither of the roads. Just as we cannot see what is going to happen when we take any decision. Say for example, you are uh, confused after your board exams, you are confused about whether to take science or to take commerce. You don't know how are you going to make the result after the boards. You are not sure about the result, but you have to make the decision now depending on your capabilities, depending on your capacity, depending on your uniqueness, right? Number six is, but he talks about taking the less traveled way by people. The poet is taking the way that is less traveled by people because he has belief in himself and is sure about his own interests and passion. Number eight, that does not mean that talking, taking the roads less traveled is the only way. Here is a small mistake. It will be taking the road less traveled in only way. It completely depends on our capacities, our wishes, our uniqueness and our passion. One who has studied in film should go in film. That does not make that he is taking a wrong road and he should go and play basketball. Okay, so it depends on our capacities, wishes and uniqueness that we decide our ways for ourselves. It does not always mean that standing apart is the right decision always. But sometimes when you're confused between standing apart and following the crowd, standing apart may be a good decision for you. Now, before ending the chapter or moving on to the questions and answers in our interactive session, I have brought forward a very important part which I have found for you from Divit Eshinoor, who is a famous philosopher, you can say, who was the president of the United States and had been a general in the Second World War about taking decisions in life, taking better decisions in life. See what he says. A big problem many of us faces in our life is analysis paralysis. While we are being paralyzed while we try to analyze something, that is the inability to make a decision. 
This typically happens when our to-do list gets too long. We have so many things to do in our list. Then only we face this indecision problem. We cannot decide which one to do first. Okay, this happens when we have a huge list. We have to go to the swimming class. We have to go to the art class. We have to practice our homework lessons. We have to practice through the lessons which have been taught in class. We have to be um, doing our things that we are passionate about. So many things on our list. That is the to-do list. We look over the list and see how much there is to be done in short amount of time. And then we start panicking about it. Instead of crossing our part of the to-do list, we end up getting nothing done at all. And when we make this list and we get confused and panicked about what to do and what not to do, we end up doing nothing at all. That is what this famous person is saying. He had an antidote to analyze this paralysis. Okay. He suggested there are four quadrants based on the level of urgency and importance. Divide the works in four different groups according to their urgency and importance. The do quadrant is for tasks that are both important and urgent. Like, for example, you have to submit a project and a homework tomorrow. First, you do that thing. That will be your do quadrant. Next is plan or schedule quadrant. That is for the thing which are important but less urgent which don't have a time constraint in it. Like for example, you love to uh, write, you love to play uh, basketball, make cricket. Those are very important in your life, but those are not urgent. Got it? So you can keep it in the plan quadrant. Okay. The third quadrant is the delicate quadrant, which is to the other people is, for example, the urgent, but not important. They are to be done. They are needed to be submitted, but they are not important in your life. Say, for example, you want to help out your friend. Okay. That is obviously not that much important, but it is urgent as, for example, he needs that help now. So you will do that work now, but you won't think about it much. And next quadrant is eliminate. Eliminate is for the tasks that are neither important nor are urgent. So you would just cross those things out of your schedule. Now, these are the most important things you have to keep in mind from this chapter. I hope this chapter is a little bit clear, clear to you. We would discuss about this further in our live interactive classes and we would also discuss about the questions and answers of this chapter in our classes.